Hi everybody, so if you're here, I guess that's because you're an Airbnb host or you're planning to become an Airbnb host quite soon. So I'm an Airbnb host myself, I have several listings in several towns and they are always consistently the best options in their towns, so they generate the most money. And I also generally have great reviews, I never go below 4.5 stars on any criteria. But I also don't overdo things, like I don't prepare cheesecakes or offer drinks to my guests because, I mean, even though this is a great thing to do, it's actually crazy to do it every time if you think about it. So my goal is to spend the least amount of time on this activity because this is not my job, right? It's a side income and to still provide a great experience to my guests. And at the same time, I see my competitors failing really hard uh, with ratings like this one. So hosting on Airbnb, it's not straightforward, right? It's not like on Craigslist or some other traditional renting website. Here you have a robust review system and a community which has certain expectations that you must live up to. So in this video, I will tell you 12 of the worst mistakes that hosts can do. And I hope that this will help you to avoid them. And I will go through them in the booking order. So we will start from when guests message you to request a reservation until their actual stay. Keep in mind that these are just the things that you should not do. Meaning that if you don't do them, this will just get you to sort of a neutral average level of guest experience. But if you want to make more money and have more guests, then you will have to go way beyond that. But I will talk about this at the end of this video. So let's start with these 12 mistakes. First of all, not answering to all requests or not answering fast enough. If you do that, it will be seen on your profile right here. Personally, when I travel with Airbnb, I usually just simply avoid hosts who don't have a 100% response rate and in less than one hour. That just means that they are not fully committed and probably their bookings will have some problems. I don't know. Some things will not be perfect. So just grab the Airbnb app on your phone and answer instantly all the time. And just on a side note, I once had a host answering me like one month after I made the request. So this was in Berlin. I wrote him in uh, November 21st. Here's the proof. And he answered me <laughs> December 21st. So I was really impressed with his commitment to actually answer me one month later and ask if I was still interested. That, that, that was quite funny. The second thing is bad communication. When someone books your place, write them all the information they need, like right away, don't wait for them to ask and always be there to answer any of the questions that they have as fast as possible. Because if they booked and they want some information from you before their arrival and you're just taking a lot of time to answer, it will once again seem like you're not reliable. Now the third thing goes into the same direction, it's not answering by phone when guests arrive. Because if they arrived and you're not there or for some reason they cannot access the place, I mean, you have to be available on your phone right away because this is sort of like an emergency situation. Because when they arrive, they have to be able to enter. If you make them wait, it's like one of the worst things that you can do. Number four is canceling reservations. This will simply penalize you in terms of Airbnb search engine. And the worst is to cancel reservations which were done using instant booking. In this case, you will be even more penalized in Airbnb search results. And if you're not on the first page, well, you will have way less bookings. So make sure to keep your calendar up to date and to commit to your bookings, especially if you use instant booking, which by the way you should use because it ranks you much higher in the search results. All right, now we're at number five. So one of the worst things to do when people arrive is to make cash transactions. For example, some hosts ask you for a deposit, right? But there's an option for that on Airbnb or they make you pay in addition for linen and towels and things like that. I had a host in Paris charge me 45 euros, which is about $50 for the line and for three people, like 15 euro each. This is an extremely old fashioned thing to do and it's super annoying even if you mention this on your ad. So please just don't do it and make all the transactions through Airbnb. Usually there are all the options for that. And when it comes to other old fashioned things that hosts do, well, there's also doing checkups and signing documents upon guests arrival. Look, this is short term rental, right? People don't want any of this hassle. So move on with it. Nobody does it anymore. I mean, no good host does it. Because yeah, that guy in Paris actually made us do checkups and sign papers, although we only stayed for two nights in his apartment. So look people, your guest's arrival must be as easy as possible, right? No hurdles. Just reduce the number of things that they have to do when they arrive. Now, number seven, once they are inside. So this is an obvious one, right? It's providing a dirty space. Cleanliness is one of the most important criteria and people can be disgusted by even slight dirt. Personally, I see it even more and more now, like everything might be clean, 
but some people will just go behind your sofa, move it around, find some dirt underneath and say that everything was dirty and leave you a bad comment for that. And it literally happened to me, so now I make sure that every single corner is clean. The other thing that can happen that is related to the previous point is having insects or even worse, bugs in your place. Actually Airbnb policy states that your listing can be deleted if there is a strong complaint from guests uh, about bugs. So if you know that there is a source of bugs in your building, make sure to deal with it ASAP. Okay, we're at number 9 now, so this one is not providing all the necessary amenities. <laughs> Seriously, this once again happened with the dude in Paris, there was no toilet paper in the apartment. And I mean, it's not like we didn't look and now that it was hidden somewhere, there was just none, not in the toilet and not anywhere else. Can you imagine? It's crazy, right? We were three people just for two nights and we had to go to a convenience store to buy a pack of toilet paper for our stay. I mean, how bad of a host can you be to do that? There are some amenities like this that are just critical, that you must have, there's no way around it. And it's funny to see that bad hosts actually accumulate mistakes like this guy from Paris. And just in my defense, I wasn't the one who booked his place, so I don't know what were his ratings before that, but... I mean, the apartment was very nice, but the experience was horrible. Okay, so the number 10 is for people who rent rooms in their place and it's not given enough personal space. Well, this one is quite straightforward, right? Uh, it's true that Airbnb is a lot about meeting new people this way, but it's also about saving money. So not all your guests will be like extroverts looking to hang out with you and talk all the time. And here's the thing, if you plan to rent rooms in your space where you live, you might want to actually change your behavior a little bit, yes. Sort of, you should suppress yourself as much as you can. For example, spend more time in your bedroom or in your office instead of spending time in your living room. That way you'll make sure that your guests don't feel uncomfortable. Number 11 is entering your guests room while they're out. They booked your place, so it's their personal space for some time. So if you forgot something in that room you're renting, just ask them before if they're okay with you going there and pick it up. Finally, the last thing is being mean to your guests. If there's a problem, if they're not happy and you think that they're wrong, Please just don't get on your nerves and don't start a clash. I mean, control yourself and find a solution. Actually, if you're a bit nervous person like me, you can find it fun to try to turn the situation around. Yeah, I know, it sounds crazy, but um, I'll try to explain that. A few times I had people who were really angry, you know, I have hundreds of reservations and statistically this will happen from time to time. There's literally nothing I can do about that. And one time a lady who booked my place, she called me and basically she said that um, everything was bad. She was mad, uh, everything was wrong. And she also told me that um, she kind of doesn't want to resolve it, she doesn't really want to talk to me about it because she doesn't want to have a clash. So obviously I had to save the situation because if we just stayed at this point, she would for sure have left me a bad review. So I convinced her the nice way that I come to the apartment that I'm renting, I meet her and we will figure this out without any clash, without any like problems. So I put my smile and charm on, I entered, I shook her hand, I let her explain all the problems, right? I was very understanding, I apologized, obviously this is the most important. And at the end she ended up happy and smiling, although the problems that she uh, mentioned didn't really go away. She also didn't leave me any review, which is much better than having a bad review. So basically, many people that are angry actually don't like to be angry. I mean, they're generally angry, something is, is not right, but they don't want to be nervous. So you can calm them down and save the situation instead of making it worse because you're convinced that they're wrong and it makes you angry. Uh, to be honest, I usually use yet another trick to save the situation, but I will talk about it right afterwards. But by any means, don't be mean to your guests, even if they are. Actually, that same guy from Paris, yeah, it's, it's still the same one, you know, it's... It's funny how bad hosts actually accumulate mistakes. Well, he was angry at us. When we said that we were not pleased with the fact that he made us pay in addition for the line, he actually got angry. I mean, this was really an unpleasant situation and at the end of the day we left him a pretty horrible review. Okay guys, so I hope that this advice will help you if you found out that you were making some of these mistakes. But like I said, these are just the basics. Let's say that if this was an exam and if you do these mistakes, you get an F or a D. And if you don't do them, you get a C or a B. I mean, you pass, but it's, it's not perfect. So just not making them is not enough to get an A, right? 
This alone won't get you the best ratings and being the best option in your area. But if you are the best option, then you will have the most bookings that you can get. So depending on the type of listing that you're renting and especially where in the world you're renting, there's a certain maximum amount of money that you can make with it. And I have a course on Udemy which explains you how to do just that, how to reach that amount. It's really an amazing course. It's quite short, but it gives you the best techniques in like the most concise way. There are also people who will tell you things like learn how we make $300,000 per year on Airbnb. I mean, it's impressive, of course, but you can only do it if you have like I don't know, a home in San Francisco and then you can easily reach that figure, right? But if you rent a small room uh, somewhere, let's say, in a rural area, which is not a tourist place, well, then this amount just doesn't mean anything to you. However, the ways to arrive at your maximum potential, these ways are always the same. Personally, I learned how to do it the hard way by making many, many mistakes. But right now, basically, the result is very simple. I have several listings in different cities and they are consistently the best options in these cities. So they always get booked first before my competitors and I spend the least amount of time managing them. So if you want to learn how to do that, just take my course on Udemy and you will see that it's extremely helpful. I'm 100% sure that you will not regret it because it's quite cheap and it will give you an amazing return on investment. Because if you take this course, you learn what's inside, you apply it, you will get more bookings and basically it will pay for itself. So if you're interested to take it, just make sure to read the comments below because I usually put a promotional coupon down there. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you inside the course for more.